Hi, I'm Charlie Huang of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, uh, we're going to talk about what to do in the event of coronary wire entrapment and wire fracture. Our case involved a coronary wire fracture in the left main. The patient is an 85-year-old man with a history of cabbage uh, 17 years ago. He had a, a lima to the diagonal, a vein graft to the LED, and a vein graft to the PDA. Five years ago, uh, he developed angina and underwent PCA of the left main into the LED after his vein graft to the LED was found to be occluded. He now presents with three days of his typical angina. ECG showed uh, one millimeter anterior SC depressions, and echo showed a low normal ejection fraction uh, with mild anterior hypokinesis. Uh, the troponin was uh, mildly elevated. On cath, the uh, RCA was found to be occluded, uh, but the vein graft to the PDA was uh, patent. The uh, circumflex was not bypassed uh, and had diffuse disease, but it was very small. The uh, lima to the diagonal was atretic, and as advertised, the uh, vein graft to the LED was occluded. The uh, native LED is shown. Uh, we see that the proximal stented segment is widely patent, uh, but there is a segment of moderate to severe disease in the mid-LED. So uh, we were not overly impressed uh, with the LED stenosis, so uh, we decided to perform FFR. Uh, it was a little trickier than expected, uh, passing the FFR wire across the LED, but FFR eventually turned out to be positive, uh, hovering uh, between 0.74 and 0.76. Uh, so we decided to proceed with PCI of the LED. Now, uh, because we had a tough time wiring the LED, uh, we uh, decided to perform PCI over the FFR wire. Thankfully, our equipment passed uh, without much of an issue. Uh, we pre-dilated the LED with a um, 2.25 millimeter balloon, uh, stented with a 2.5 by 28 millimeter DES, and sequentially post-dilated uh, with 2.5 and 3.0 millimeter uh, NC balloons. So uh, after uh, stenting and post-dilating, uh, we had a fairly nice uh, angiographic result. Uh, PCI was uh, fairly uneventful so far, and uh, we're uh, getting ready to pull the wire and uh, set up uh, for our uh, final shot. Uh, but the wire uh, comes back a bit and then stops. Uh, we try pulling again. Uh, the wire uh, seems stuck. So we uh, pulled a little bit harder. Uh, the wire finally comes back. Uh, but then appears to unravel and lengthen, and then it gets stuck again, and this time uh, in the left main. Not good. Uh, notice how the uh, radio opaque segment of the wire appears a lot shorter than usual, uh, and in retrospect, and looking back at the previous NGOs, it's possible that there was either a kink or a defect in the radio opaque segment uh, that then became stuck in the freshly stented segment and then unraveled as we pulled. So uh, what do we do now? So uh, when you're faced with an entrapped stuck wire, first, don't pull hard. As we saw in our case, uh, pulling too hard uh, can cause the wire to unravel or even fracture, uh, potentially causing bigger problems. Uh, there are a few techniques to remember uh, to free uh, your stuck wire. Uh, first, uh, perhaps the easiest is to reach for a microcatheter. Advance the microcatheter as far as possible over the stuck wire and then gently tug on the wire. Uh, tapered microcatheters, uh, such as the Corsair or the Turnpike, uh, usually work best. Uh, the rationale is that the microcatheter can both physically dislodge the stuck wire and allow more focused application of the pulling force on the wire. Second uh, is to try a small balloon. Uh, advance the small balloon as far as possible over the stuck wire, inflate the balloon, and then tug on the wire. The rationale here is that the inflated balloon can physically dislodge the wire, um, and also uh, the action of the balloon inflation itself can itself uh, deliver focus force to the wire and dislodge it. Third uh, is to try to redilate the vessel. Uh, the idea here is to use a large balloon to dilate the vessel at the site of the stuck wire. The rationale being that dilating the vessel could change the, the geometry of the vessel, the calcium or the stent strut, whatever that's trapping the, uh, the stuck wire, and allow you to gently pull the wire out. Of course, if nothing works, and then you'll have to call your uh, cardiac surgical colleagues uh, for surgical removal. So uh, we advanced a, a turnpike microcatheter over the wire and gently tugged a little bit more on the wire. But unfortunately, our wire snapped. Uh, 
uh, you see a cine of the wire fragment uh, in the coronary here. The uh, wire segment that we pulled out uh, was actually quite thin, unraveled, and appeared uh, very much stretched out. The uh, fractured uh, wire fragment appeared uh, to extend, uh, extend uh, from the left main into the LED. Unfortunately, it does not li look like it uh, protrudes uh, into the aorta. Uh, so uh, what do we do now? So uh, when you're faced with a fractured coronary wire, the first question uh, you ask yourself is whether you need to worry about it. If the answer is no, uh, for example, if the wire fragment is uh, in a uh, small side branch or very distal, uh, then you could just leave it alone. Uh, for these patients, uh, you might consider uh, long-term uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. Now, if the wire fragment is in a large vessel or if the fragment is very long, uh, then you cannot just leave it alone. In this case, I suggest first doing uh, intravascular imaging to better understand the problem. That's because uh, thin stretched out wire fragments may not be visible even under uh, high power cine. And you need to have a good idea of how long the wire fragment is and whether there is any protrusion uh, into the aorta. Next, uh, you want to ask yourself uh, whether uh, you can just stent over the wire fragment. Uh, stenting over the wire fragment will pin the wire against the wall and uh, prevent it from embolizing and reduce the chance of, uh, of uh, thrombosis. And effectively, stenting uh, turns the wire fragment uh, into a strut of a bare metal stent. Um, if you can stent over the wire fragment, then just stent it. Uh, this is a simple solution. Uh, after stenting, uh, you might want to consider a long-term uh, DAPT. Now, um, if your wire fragment is very long or if it protrudes into the aorta, uh, then you're not gonna be able to stent it. Uh, also, uh, if the wire fragment is in the left main or if it spans across a bifurcation, uh, it may not be ideal uh, to put a stent there either. So uh, if you uh, cannot stent over the wire fragment, uh, then you'll need to attempt uh, to retrieve it. Uh, retrieving wire fragments from the coronary is usually quite difficult and uh, definitely uh, easier said than done. Um, there are a few techniques. Um, first, if the wire segment is um, uh, very proximal, uh, such as in the left main and the proximal LED or the proximal RCA, uh, you can attempt to capture it using a snare, uh, usually a, a gooseneck snare. Uh, second, if the wire is a bit more distal or if the gooseneck is unsuccessful, uh, you can try to capture it uh, using the basket of an uh, embolic protection device, such as a filter wire. You have to be uh, very, very careful uh, here, though, as you don't want the uh, filter wire basket itself to get stuck as well. So, for example, uh, for example, if you have um, uh, freshly placed stents, um, especially if they're not uh, fully post dilated yet, you'll have to be extremely careful using filter wires. Um, third, uh, you can try uh, wire twirling. Uh, the idea here is to pass multiple wires, usually three or more, and twirl the wires around your wire fragment. Uh, once the wire fragment is nice and intertwined with your wires, uh, you then pull the whole thing back uh, as a unit, uh, sometimes using a guide liner uh, to slide over the intertwined wires before pulling uh, is useful. If you're able to successfully uh, capture your wire fragment, uh, I then suggest doing a follow-up OCT or IVIS uh, to make sure everything is out and that there was no dissection. And you can place a stent uh, if needed at this point. Um, if you're not able to capture the wire fragment, uh, then reconsider uh, whether you can stent over the wire, even if less than ideal, for example, in the left main or at the bifurcation. And if that is not possible, uh, then you'll have to call uh, for uh, surgical removal. So uh, in our case, uh, we did IVIS, and uh, you can see uh, the wire fragment here uh, at around 9 o'clock. And on pullback of the, wire, uh, of the IVIS, uh, the wire fragment uh, broke uh, cleanly in the mid-left main um, and did not protrude uh, into the aorta, uh, fortunately. So we uh, decided uh, to attempt uh, retrieval. Uh, the wire uh, was in the left main into the LED, uh, which already had one to two layers of stents in it. Uh, so even though we could just stent over the wire, uh, we thought it was not uh, ideal. So we uh, first tried uh, the uh, wire twirling uh, technique uh, with three different wires around the fragment, uh, but the fragment uh, could not be pulled back, uh, even using a guideliner. We then tried a gooseneck snare, but the snare uh, could not uh, capture the wire fragment either. Uh, 
Uh, we then thought about using a filter wire, uh, but we were concerned that the basket of the filter wire could itself get stuck uh, around uh, our freshly placed stent. So uh, we uh, decided uh, against it. After our attempts at retrieval, uh, the uh, wire fragment, uh, as you can see here, uh, stayed uh, fairly unchanged. And at this point, uh, we decided uh, to just stent over the wire fragment. So uh, we went ahead and deployed a 3.5 by 33 millimeter DES from the left main into the LED, uh, gelling the circ. Uh, the stent uh, was then post dilated uh, with a 4.0 millimeter uh, NC balloon. And after stenting, uh, we did repeat IVIS. Uh, the wire fragment is now trapped behind the stent and is no longer free in the lumen. Uh, there was no dissection and uh, there was a good stent expansion and uh, strut apposition. And uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, uh, which we thought was uh, reasonably satisfactory. Uh, the patient had an uneventful overnight stay and went home the next day. Uh, we did uh, recommend prolonged uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. All right, uh, take home messages. Um, first, uh, I suggest avoid uh, performing uh, PCI over FFR wires. FFR wires uh, tend to be more fragile and more easily kinked uh, compared to workhorse wire, and uh, it's almost always well worth your time uh, to uh, rewire the vessel uh, with a workhorse wire uh, after FFR. Um, if your wire uh, becomes entrapped and stuck uh, first, uh, don't pull hard. If you do, uh, the wire can unravel uh, and fracture. Um, try advancing a microcatheter or inflating a small balloon as far as possible over the stuck wire and, and pull gently. Uh, you can also try uh, dilating the vessel at the site of the stuck wire. Uh, that can possibly change the local vessel geometry and allow the wire to be freed. Um, if your wire actually fractures, uh, I suggest first uh, performing intravascular imaging, if possible, uh, to understand uh, the extent of the fractured fragment. Uh, thin, uh, stretched out wires uh, may not be easily seen on CINE. If your wire fragment is in a small side branch, uh, or if it's uh, very distal, uh, you might be able to just leave the wire alone and, and put the patient on the long-term DAPT. Uh, if it turns out that you cannot leave the wire alone, uh, then uh, stent over the wire fragment if you can. But if you cannot stent over the wire uh, either, uh, then attempt to capture the wire fragment uh, using a snare or the wire twirling technique. In some instances, uh, you can also try to capture it uh, using an uh, embolic protection device basket, uh, such as a filter wire. Finally, if uh, all else fails, uh, you'll need to call your cardiac surgical colleagues uh, for uh, surgical removal. Thank you for watching.